Before Andre the Giant would take the wrestling world by storm and would be referred to as the eighth wonder of the world. Others here tonight. One headbutt. A second headbutt. Andre spins a holster around. Before Andre would break into Hollywood appearing in television and films, including The Princess Bride. Before Andre would become notorious for tales of him drinking 156 beers in one sitting and eating two bottles of vodka just to get a buzz. Can I, can I get you a mimosa? <laughs> no, thank you. Before Andre the Giant would be the first wrestler inducted into the Wrestling Hall of Fame in 1993, the same year of his passing. And Andre the Giant, he died this week in uh, Paris, France after going home to his father's funeral. We actually toyed with the idea of me drinking 100 beers while filming this video, but then we like, well, that would probably kill me. Now, if Andre the Giant was born in another era, he likely would have found himself traveling in a freak show or have been a gladiator. Well, things worked out well for him in the 70s and the 80s as the world of wrestling was booming and Andre quickly became one of its biggest stars, literally and figuratively. At his largest, the Giant was 6 feet 11 inches tall and well over 500 pounds. There was a curse that came with his greatness and doctors informed him that he would not live to see the age of 40. Like he did with most things in his life, well, he defied these odds and made it to 46 before passing away of an apparent heart attack. Let's take a look at his life, shall we? What's going on guys, it's your boy Michael McCrudden documenting the life and career of Andre the Giant, here for you on Before They Were Gone. Now you guys requested this video and in the past we have done plenty of other legends who have left us and there is an entire playlist dedicated to them and some of these videos are my absolute face. So you know, be sure to check that out. As always, let me know who you want me to document next. Now let's get into this bio. Andre the Giant was born Andre René Ruzimov on May 19, 1946 in Grenoble, France, which is a pretty picturesque place, laying at the foothills of the French Alps. His parents were Boris and Marianne Ruzimov, who were of Slavic ancestry, and it was apparent early on that he was going to be a big boy. His grandfather had apparently also suffered from the disease of acromegaly, or gigantism, but this term and the effects of the condition were unknown to the family at the time. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is sparkling water. F <laughs> <laughs> Andre was one of five. S what? Andre was one of five siblings and they all labored on the family farm. His father also had work in construction, building homes for others. One such project was a cottage for famed novelist Samuel Beckett. When Beckett heard of 12 year old Andre who was allegedly standing at 6 foot 3 and 200 pounds, he was flabbergasted. Furthermore, Andre had been deemed too big to fit on the school bus, so the Nobel Prize winner decided to drive Andre to and from school in his truck, during which the two would discuss cricket. The odd pairing has since become both a play and a film. Andre was a good student with a knack for mathematics, but he dropped out of school in the 8th grade, not foreseeing himself a future as an academic. From there, he worked on his family farm, completing the work equivalent to three men, and then at 14, he left to Paris to seek bigger opportunities. He completed an apprenticeship in woodworking and worked at a factory. He applied to join the French army, but was rejected because the army didn't have big enough boots, bunk beds, or deep enough trenches for him to defend himself in. I mean, the guy has a size 20 foot, so you can't blame him for not, you know, having shoes for him. What, what size shoe do you wear? 20. 20. <laughs> Good heavens, let's just uh... It was at the age of 17 that Andre first stepped into a wrestling ring and became a quick draw for obvious reasons. He became known for his baby face but intimidating physique. Word quickly spread in the wrestling community about this French giant and wrestling champion Frank Valos from Canada, well he became Andre's manager. Soon enough, Andre was performing in Canada, the UK, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, Africa and Japan. He ran out of fingers. At 19, he visited his parents for the first time in five years, and Andre had grown so dramatically since his departure that his parents didn't even recognize him when he knocked on the door. He was now an accomplished wrestler, and his parents soon realized that they had watched him on TV, not knowing that they were watching their own son fight the legendary Jean Ferrer. Minute. Uh, I'm going to go to the next one. Yeah, I'm going to go to the next one. What? Ah! 
His size wasn't only bringing him in work as a wrestler, but also as an actor. He appeared in his first film at 21, but they did something to his appearance, making him look Asian. Are you late as a wrestler, he was promoted as being 7 foot 4, but when his height was measured at the age of 24, he stood at exactly 6 foot 9 and 3 quarters of an inch. It was in Japan that his condition was finally diagnosed as acromegaly or gigantism, an endocrinological disorder that causes the body to secrete excessive amounts of growth hormones that produces continual growth, especially in the hands, the head, and the feet. The doctors informed him that he wouldn't see the age of 40. In 1971, at the age of 25, Andre had already taken over the American Wrestling Association and the International Wrestling Enterprise, and it was time for him to take the next big step in his career. He met with Vince McMahon Sr. in 1973 and made his WWF debut as Andre the Giant in Madison Square Gardens, where he defeated Buddy Wolf. In 1975, the Washington Redskins they offered Andre a tryout as a defensive linesman, but he decided to stick with what he knew best. Although he never lifted weights, he was thought by some to be the strongest man in the world. Andre went on a 15 year winning streak in the WWF. He had never been pinned or forced to submit in the WWF ring. He would continue to wrestle internationally, working as many as 300 days a year. He also continued to book work as an actor. Check out this uncredited role in Conan the Destroyer. He also played an alien cybernetic Bigfoot in The Six Million Dollar Man. Although he was undefeated in the WWF, he did lose a few matches while on the road. On a trip to Mexico in 84, he lost to Kinect and was put into a submission by Antonio Inoki in 1986. Now there are plenty of stories about Andre in the ring, but the one I found the most funny well, was when Jake the Snake Roberts revealed that he was pinned to the mat and then Andre farted on him for a total of 30 seconds. He stated, Giants fart for an extremely long period of time. There also exists a photo of Andre standing next to a 5 year old Dwayne The Rock Johnson. There's another story of Andre from outside the ring where he was at a bar drinking by himself. He was then getting harassed by a bunch of patrons. So how did the giant handle it? Well he chased the dudes out of the bar, they locked themselves inside a car, so Andre, he flipped the car over. In 1979, Andre fathered a daughter with a woman named Jean. His daughter, Robin Christensen Rusimov, well her conception was something of a miracle. Those affected with his disease, well they're usually sterile. Due to Andre's life on the road, he only met his daughter a number of times, but he left everything to her in his will. Other accomplishments outside of the wrestling ring included him opening a restaurant in Montreal, which came in handy because the dude could eat as many as 12 steaks and 15 lobsters in one sitting. And uh, do you ever work there? Yeah, I eat there. <laughs> you, you sure eat there, but, yeah. uh, but do you ever go in no. and, and greet the customers as they're coming in? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andre never married and when he wasn't working, he lived on a 200 acre ranch in Ellerbeer, North Carolina. There he raised longhorn cattle he tore around on ATVs and he kicked back in one of several custom made giant sized recliners. I just enjoy my time over there and walk in the woods and I got some cows and just have a good time yeah. on the farm. His house also featured a tree growing through the middle of each of his three stories, which is pretty cool. You know, it's kind of like the disease inside him. No matter what tried to contain it, it would continue to grow. In 1987, Andre would take on his most iconic film role in The Princess Bride as Fezzik. I do not envy you the headache you will have when you awake. But in the meantime, rest well and dream of large women. The film's writer, William Goldman, penned the script with Andre in mind for the role. Andre originally thought he would only be appearing in one scene, but was delighted with the amount of camera time he received and was said to carry around a copy of the film with him at all times following its release. One of the most well known stories about Andre's alcohol consumption comes from the set of The Princess Bride. One night after consuming well over 100 beers, he passed out in the hotel lobby. Since none of the hotel staff could carry Andre, well they just draped a piano cover over him and let him sleep in the hallway. Andre once drank 16 bottles of wine in 4 hours before wrestling 3 matches, including a 20 man battle royale. He was victorious at Wrestlemania 1 and 2, but would lose to Hulk Hogan via body slam in Wrestlemania 3. Sorry, I got a little <clears throat> weird there, but Hulk Hogan lifted him up 
And Hulk Hogan said he like weighed 700 pounds, not five. Greatest professional athlete in the world today. Look at this. He's his biggest title, arguably, was his defeat of Hulk Hogan for the World Wrestling Federation Heavyweight title, which happened on February 5th, 1988. Suplex right on top of him. He's on him. One. We get a two. That's it. We got him. him. He got him. During these years of success, his disease was starting to take a toll on his body. At his largest, Andre was probably 6 feet 11 inches tall and weighed close to 500 pounds. He snapped his ankle in 81 just getting out of bed. By 87, he was in constant pain and had to undergo back surgery. He would wear a brace which was like concealed by his one arm wrestling gear. And when he went into back surgery, well the anesthesiologist, they didn't know how much morphine to give him. So Vince McMahon, he told them that it took two bottles of vodka to get him a buzz and they decided to work with that information. Andre did drink a lot more towards the end of his life, but he did so as a way of treating the pain. The doctors actually encouraged him to do so as a way of self-medicating, and by 1992, well, he had to undergo extensive knee surgery. Like the dude was bursting at his seams. Tough go. He made his last WWF appearance at SummerSlam 91. He would tour Mexico and Japan, which was the country he was most celebrated in, and this was before he officially retired in 92. Now we can take a look at his final TV appearance, and you can tell he wasn't in great shape. He also needed the aid of a cane. Thank you, and it's, I'm very happy to be back here to see all my TBS. All wrestling stars. On January 27th, 1993, Andre the Giant died of an apparent heart attack in his hotel room in Paris. He was there visiting his hometown because his father had just passed away two weeks prior. Ladies and gentlemen, before we continue with the matches, I'd like to announce the death of one of my favorite wrestlers and one of the most famous wrestlers of all time. Andre's cremated remains totaled 17 pounds. After his death, well, he became the first wrestler to be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. This was in 1993. In fact, the WWE Hall of Fame was created solely to honor Andre the Giant. He would never be forgotten by the sport or the world. And just one more little piece of info, he also inspired the character of Hugo Andor in Street Fighter, so now you know. As for the rest of the story, well I'm going to wrap this one up here because this is before they were gone. My name is Michael McCredden and we make all sorts of celebrity bios here for you on this channel so sound off in the comments down below who you want me to document next. It's been a while since we've done someone out of history but I swear these are some of my favorite videos to make. Let me know if there's someone you want me to document next in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!